What is the plan to deter or uh, crack down on violent crime in Stockton? If you look at the homicides that we've experienced year to date, and then if we were to trend that out, uh, we would be more in line with uh, the, the homicide results and numbers compared to 2020. Um, and we're in 2021, we had a, a 30% reduction uh, in homicides. So we're in one of those years where, you know, crime and homicide comes in ebbs and flows. And we're in one of those years where it's a spike. I will tell you that um, the city of Stockton uh, is taking these matters very, very seriously. One homicide, one death is one too many. I'm in constant contact with the chief of police, with uh, our city manager regarding uh, our city's response and our strategies uh, to mitigate the violence, um, not only for the end of the year, but as we move forward as well from a prevention standpoint in subsequent years. So currently right now, what we're focusing in on as a city is threefold. We're focusing on enforcement, outreach, and follow-up. So enforcement from an enforcement standpoint, it's about increasing our visibility. It's about taking a multi-agency uh, approach uh, with our other law enforcement partners to really uh, address crime in those focus areas uh, to mitigate you know, future uh, violence. Also outreach, uh, you know, the city of Stockton, we have a very comprehensive uh, outreach intervention and prevention program through our Office of Violence Prevention. Um, our Office of Violence Pre Prevention has several uh, partners throughout the community uh, that specifically uh, work together uh, to help reduce and address uh, gang violence um, and to make contact with those um, that are more likely, you know, to to generate and produce violent crime throughout our city. We also have neighborhood impact teams with regards to our outreach efforts. So those communities that have been impacted uh, as a result of the, the homicides year to date, um, we're on the ground. We're providing outreach, we're providing support um, through our, ch our chaplaincy department, uh, through our partnership with community-based organizations throughout the city to let those community knows, know that they're important to us and that we care about them and uh, that we're gonna do everything that we can to ensure their safety, uh, but most importantly, uh, bring justice uh, to those families as well that want answers that have been impacted and that are victims of these violent, violent crimes. And then follow up. We don't want to be uh, uh, reactive when it comes to uh, the crime and the homicides. We want to be responsive. And the way that we're responsive is by strategically analyzing um, though the information as a result of this crime and the homicides and putting together plans, strategic plans that address those um, and that are targeted in, in those areas. But the bottom line is, is we cannot accomplish our goals and our initiatives without the help of the community. Um, we need the community. What we realize as a result of these homicides that have taken place, at least, at least, at least 17 um, of the homicides that we've experienced to date um, are a result of conflict as well. And what the public needs to know is that it's not okay. Um, there's no sporting events. There's no road rage. There's no argument. There's nothing is worth taking somebody else's life and you and 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 and, and impacting your life uh, as a result of, of violence. We have to do better as a community when it comes to uh, managing and conflict and, and mitigating and mediating those types of situations. And we need the help of the public. We need the help of our community-based organizations. We need the help of our, our greater faith-based community uh, to address uh, these specific areas. And our council is, is, is very committed, even not only in immediate, but mid and long-term uh, solutions to, to help prevent uh, violence from taking place uh, in our city. What we also understand is, over 50%, upwards of 56% of, 
of the homicides in our community have impacted uh, young, young adults between the ages of 18 and 29. That's not okay. It's not okay. Um, the average age of our city is it, over 50% of our city is under the age of, of, of 35. So our council has committed to investing um, in youth and young adult programming, uh, that those investments in our youth programming and development is actually an investment in future crime prevention in our community because we're providing opportunity and we're providing a pathway for those individuals. Lovely, thank you. And, you know, agreed, I, 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 I love that there's, you know, being initiative done um, right now and, you know, before all this started happening, but um, that's, like I said, that's what people want to hear. People want to, people want to hear from their leaders that, you know, there are things being done because a lot of people don't see that from the outside. It, and it's important for our people to know that um, the city of Stockton is working very hard, not only internally, but um, there's collaboration with community-based organizations throughout our city um, that are unprecedented in nature. We haven't come together um, historically like we're coming together right now to not only meet this moment, the, but to change the culture and the dynamic of our city moving forward. And, and we want to be as transparent as possible in this process. And we want to do that and, and demonstrate that transparency alongside our, our trusted community partners. And that's why we will be having a town hall at the beginning of October, uh, specifically uh, to address crime where our chief of police, our city manager, and myself and other council, council members, community-based organizations and civic leaders will be present as well so that the, the public can hear from us. So we're not just waiting for the public to come to us, we're going to the public as well because that's what they deserve. Good, that's great to hear. And um, uh, and I'm sure I'm sure this will be addressed at the town hall. But just for now, you know, what would you say um, to the members of the community that that um, that all are feeling that fear and that uncertainty due to this rise in violent crime? Well, to the community that is feeling fear and uncertainty, um, I would say that's a natural feeling. But trust that um, your uh, the, the people who are sworn to protect and serve you are working hard and diligently to protect your communities. Um, our partnerships with our community-based organizations uh, that are doing the work on the ground, day in and day out, from an outreach, prevention, intervention standpoint, uh, are working hard on your behalf to help bring healing and stability to our community. But I want the community to continue uh, to move forward to continue to go about your daily lives, uh, to continue to uh, enjoy uh, your beautiful city. But I'm, I'll just tell the community, uh, for those who uh, are thinking about and inflicting harm or violence um, on the residents of Stockton, Stockton's not the place for it. And there's zero tolerance for it, it's unacceptable. And there's one thing that this community will do, is we'll continue to unite, We'll continue to move forward together and work together to improve the quality of life for everybody in our city. Because Stockton uh, will become the best city in America to live, raise a family, and grow a business. That's the vision of our city, and that's what we're committed to. Wonderful, thank you. And uh, my last question would mainly be, uh, what? And I know you said that there's going to be a town hall about this, but what, uh, where do you see violent crime right now on the city's priority list? At the top of the priority list. Violent crime is always at the top of the priority list. Now, where we've experienced a increase in homicides uh, year to date, we've also realized a, de a decrease um, in non-fatal shootings as well, which is more of a true indicator of, of crime in the in the city right and so we have to continue our efforts uh to reduce um those non-violent uh fatal, non fatal shootings and do everything we can and work together uh, and strategize to get illegal guns off the street awesome thank you and was there anything else that you wanted to add today 
I just appreciate you for taking the time to uh, to cover this very important um, and sensitive uh, topic. And the public does deserve uh, answers, and they need to hear from their leaders.